To help me explore the nature of late Bronze Age warfare, I've been joined by weapons expert Mike Lodes. Most ancient battles started with a barrage of missiles. So there were bows, there were javelins, and there were slings. And it's a very simple weapon. It's a stone and a little pouch on a string. And you simply throw it. And it can go quite a long way. And you get 20, 30 people like that throwing missiles. And then you really pin the enemy down. Probably the most iconic weapon of this age, though, is the Mycenaean figure of eight shield. And it's an insignum of a goddess. Yeah. So maybe that shape is simply doing that. Yes. What, showing the shape of a woman? Showing the voluptuous shape yeah, of a curvy woman. That. But I think there's another reason, which is structural. If you look at this model, little wicker model, hasn't really got the figure of eight in yet. Something that big, made like that, is very weak, it's very pliable, so spears, stones flying in, it would simply do that. But as soon as I give it away, as soon as I pinch it and give it some shape, then the engineering of curves mm -hmm. yeah, that's much gives stronger. it tremendous structural strength. Yeah. So I think that's one reason why they're like that. Another reason, quite possibly, is so that they could use their spears, and it just gives a good gap for the spears or the swords. And both sides would have had spears, on both sides would have had swords. Bronze Age swords are relatively short, but ideal both for slashing and for thrusting. Now, what would a weapon combination like that do against a weapon combination like this? You would think perhaps this was the superior system. Obviously, the spear has got reach and I can really get in there. If I get in too close, there are those Mycenaean depictions of them getting their swords over the top of the shields. If he defeats the shield, I can knock it away with the spear and I can clear him. He, of course, can use the sword. It's not only used for thrusting, but also for cutting. I can, I can thrust back at him. And with all combat, there's going to be body checks and wrestling and hard physical stuff. Perhaps a disadvantage of the spear is it can be easily knocked aside. But an advantage is it can be used with both ends. But what else would have been coming out of the ships? Because you haven't just got your, your shield, shield and your weapon. No, obviously they'd have had their armour, which means more to them than just protecting them. Armour was something to be prized. Armour was the physical incarnation of their honour. So display is incredibly important, yeah. the impact you made. Absolutely. Glimmering in bronze or gleaming in white, whatever they're wearing, they need to look splendid. I mean, not a thousand ships, though. No, I mean, I'm sure that the Thousand Ships is either an exaggeration or a metaphor for saying all our available resources. What's the motivation of the men to follow Menelaus? The ships are going to be privately owned. The soldiers are going to be privately recruited. And the only thing he can offer them is the rich pickings of Troy. Homer goes on about that the whole time. You fight and then you go and get a bit of booty. You fight and then you go and raid the treasure from a temple. Thousand ships is 30,000 men. That's going to make the rich pickings go round a bit thinly. Yeah. So 